Both movies start off in 1997, but in Kingsman, their 1997 is the flashback kind. As for the story, there's a whole lot of weird stuff going on in the world, and when the regular government can't handle it, the type of who you're gonna call people to call is the secret agency that operates independent from the government. On the first mission, we see that there's an older agent dressed in black who basically admits that he's getting too old for this expletive. Age doesn't matter in Men in Black because Agent K sees the F up coming from a mile away, Exy's dad sees the F up from a mile away, but it still sucks because the bomb is only inches away from his body parts and he gets politely escorted to heaven as a result. With one less agent on both teams, the agency decides to take on an intern. Two of the senior agents have a recruit in mind. It's a kid whose dad they were close with before his death. The difference is you never find out Agent K knew Agent J's dad unless you stick around for the third installment of the trilogy. Cut to the new recruit. It's understandable why the organization would want him to bring his talents to so-and-so. You notice some of his athleticism during this parkour chase scene, but at the end of the scene when he's out of breath, Exy keeps going and going. And Agent J is like, Bruh. and runs the hell out of the stairs instead. I read on IMDb trivia that the director made the lead actors wear a tight choker baby chain to symbolize how he's about to put the spy game in a chokehold, which is really awesome, except it's not because I just totally lied just now. I'm just really hoping he didn't pick out that necklace himself. If anything, in Kingsman, Exy wears the little baby choker necklace because the charm is relevant to the plot, and Men in Black, Jay wears it because of his finances at the moment. Fast forward to the scene after the red London bus part, the main character ends up getting questioned in the interrogation room and the cops are giving him a hard time. It's here where he finally meets his mentor. The mentor asks him out on a date, for business purposes I mean, and everything is going smooth until some guy's up to no good. Harry puts an end to it and shows the audience how he prefers to solve his problems without the use of a gun. AJK ain't got no time for that. Immediately after, the main character gets a job application for a job that doesn't require background checks, and when he asks what the dress code is, casual, business casual, or business informal, he's told to dress business gangsta and shows up to the secret headquarters the next day dressed like the Nickelodeon all that thing song. The headquarters seem the same outside, but as soon as you go down the elevator, if you need to contact a co-worker, just dial the extension at MIB, but in Kingsman, you gotta dial 9 first. Dude is the last one to training. When the tests start, I'm not gonna lie, he struggles a little bit. There's a part where it's every man for himself, and it's sad and embarrassing at the same time because this girl dies. In Men in Black, the girl that fake dies is fake, and the girl that fake dies in Kingsman is real. Which brings me to my next difference. Agent J later passes with flying colors on his tests. Exy Fs it up, and gets an F on his. To Exy's defense, 9 out of 10 people will fail his test because there was no way of knowing that the gun wasn't loaded. Kingsman's Secret Service may be against cruelty to animals, but organizations like that are few and far between. For example, the folks at MIB could give 5 dams or less what happens to anybody with more than 2 lags, so you just gotta know the type of people that you're dealing with. In Men in Black, when you get accepted to join the force, you have to do this thing where they erase your identity from every database and even your own mother will forget you ever existed. In Kingsman, his mom forgets her children exist but that's only because she's too busy remembering how to decrease her self-esteem. Another similarity is that both agencies have amnesia software that proves useful when you want to avoid media coverage. On one hand, these agents use a painless neuralizer where they replace your real memories with fictional memories they choose. On the other hand, these agents shoot you in the neck and when you fall to the ground, you replace your current memories with a concussion more or less. But whatever. We now get to the part where the Ebony character puts on his Burlington Co. factory attire. Differences in Men in Black, Agent J makes this look good. And in Kingsman, Valentine makes this look hood. In the second act, we find out a little bit more about our bad guy. He's the same dude that got tore by the Velociraptors in the Jurassic Park franchise. To get more insight on what kind of crimes he's been committing, the good guys visit his house. Manners are all over the place as the wife and men in black offer them some sugar, and in Kingsman, they're offered salt. After this, they discover that the villain had a meeting with the old guy dude. Curious on what the discussion was about, they pay him a visit. It gets awkward when they notice a surgical cut near his ear, and after that, the old guy's head opens up. In men in black, after the head opens up, the Archelian's last words are, the galaxy is on Orion's belt. In Kingsman, after the head opens up, Professor Arnold's last words are, and I quote, <laughs> When they start doing research to dig up more data, you realize this movie could have been done way quicker if they used company equipment for company purposes. One uses it to spy on his co-workers, which you could argue he's doing his job since he's a spy in the first place, and the other uses it to spy on his former flame in a softcore pornish kind of way. Later on, Exy tells us he's light-fingered, so for all intents and purposes, he's better solving mysteries with his hands than a laptop anyway. Dude's so good with his hands, how good is he? He performs surgery on a dead body with no prior knowledge other than a YouTube tutorial. Earlier in 
in the film, Agent J did it too, but needed a special helper. The face you make when somebody tells you they're about to wipe out your entire planet and give you one hour to stop them. And the face you make when somebody tells you the exact same thing, but only give you two minutes. Afterwards, the bad guy gets real cliche and takes a female hostage. In Men in Black, he's all like, shut up, shut up, shut up. If you don't, I'm gonna have to take you to space with me. In Kingsman, Valentine doesn't bring up the space ultimatum because the chicks in that movie actually prefer it. Agent J and K go after the girl and the car goes berserk after the young buck presses the button. The car goes berserk for Eggsy too, but the older buck presses the button though. Near the end of the movie, everything starts going crazy. There's a baseball stadium full of fictional depictions of Mets fans, the same exact scenes in Kingsman, but they fill the stadium with real Mets fans for a more realistic take. In one scene, the bad guy and the good guy share a face-to-face -face moment. Good guy diz eyes in Kingsman. The other good guy over here gets eaten up, but humans are like gum so they can't be digested and could take up to two years to move through your intestinal activity properly if you don't use the bathroom three times a day. So he survives basically. After that, both bad guys get their torso punctured and their insides are all over the place. Differences in MIB, the monster's insides were full of Agent K, pause, because he ate them earlier. Pause again. In Kingsman, he must have just ate spinach. At the end, the hero saves the hostage. She hands Eggsy some booty in Kingsman and in Men in Black, she just hands Agent J a job application. And those are 24 reasons these movies are different. So truth or dare, like and share, leave a comment under there. If you don't, that's not fair. This thing took a week to prepare. But I'm not a rapper though. <gasps> Best elevator music I've ever heard.